Pausanias, Greek, Pausanias Pausanias, c. AD 110 c. 180 was a Greek traveller and geographer of the 2nd century AD, who lived in the time of Roman emperors Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and Marcus Aurelius. He is famous for his description of Greece ancient Greek, Helados Periagesis Helados Periagesis, a lengthy work that describes ancient Greece from his first-hand observations. This work provides crucial information for making links between classical literature and modern archaeology. Andrew Stewart assesses him as a careful, pedestrian writer interested not only in the grandiose or the exquisite but in unusual sites and obscure ritual. He is occasionally careless or makes unwarranted inferences, and his guides or even his own notes sometimes mislead him, yet his honesty is unquestionable, and his value without par. Biography <inaudible> 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 Pausanias was born in 110 AD into a Greek family and was probably a native of Lydia. He was certainly familiar with the western coast of Asia Minor, but his travels extended far beyond the limits of Ionia. Before visiting Greece, he had been to Antioch, Joppa, and Jerusalem, and to the banks of the River Jordan. In Egypt, he had seen the pyramids. While at the Temple of Ammon, he had been shown the hymn once sent to that shrine by Pindar. In Macedonia, he appears to have seen the tomb said to be that of Orpheus in Lebethra modern Livethra. Crossing over to Italy, he had seen something of the cities of Campania and of the wonders of Rome. He was one of the first known to write of seeing the ruins of Troy, Alexandria Troas, and Mycenae. Topic. Work Pausanias' description of Greece is in ten books, each dedicated to some portion of Greece. He begins his tour in Attica, Attica where the city of Athens and its deems dominate the discussion. Subsequent books describe Corinthia Corinthiaca second book, Laconia Laconica third, Messenia Messeniaca fourth, Elis Elaacan fifth and sixth, Achaea Achaica seventh, Arcadia Arcadica eighth, Boeotia Boetica ninth, Phocis Phocica and Ozolian Locris Locron Ozolan tenth. The project is more than topographical, it is a cultural geography. Pausanias digresses from the description of architectural and artistic objects to review the mythological and historical underpinnings of the society that produced them. As a Greek writing under the auspices of the Roman Empire, he was in an awkward cultural space, between the glories of the Greek past he was so keen to describe and the realities of a Greece beholden to Rome as a dominating imperial force. His work bears the marks of his attempt to navigate that space and establish an identity for Roman Greece. He is not a naturalist by any means, although from time to time, he does comment on the physical realities of the Greek landscape. He notices the pine trees on the sandy coast of Elis, the deer and the wild boars in the oak woods of Fello, and the crows amid the giant oak trees of Alalcamene. It is mainly in the last section that Pausanias touches on the products of nature, such as the wild strawberries of Helicon, the date palms of Aulis, and the olive oil of Tytheria, as well as the tortoises of Arcadia and the white blackbirds of Cyllene. Pausanias is most at home in describing the religious art and architecture of Olympia and of Delphi. Yet, even in the most secluded regions of Greece, he is fascinated by all kinds of depictions of deities, holy relics, and many other sacred and mysterious objects. At Thebes he views the shields of those who died at the Battle of Leuctra, the ruins of the House of Pindar, and the statues of Hesiod, Arian, Thamyrus, and Orpheus in the Grove of the Muses on Helicon, as well as the portraits of Corinna at Tanagra and of Polybius in the cities of Arcadia. Pausanias has the instincts of an antiquary. As his modern editor, Christian Habicht, has said, In general, he prefers the old to the new, the sacred to the profane. There is much more about classical than about contemporary Greek art, more about temples, altars and images of the gods, than about public buildings and statues of politicians. Some magnificent and dominating structures, such as the Stoa of King Attalus in the Athenian Agora rebuilt by Homer Thompson or the Excedra of Herodes Atticus at Olympia are not even mentioned. Unlike a Baedeker guide, in Periagesis Pausanias stops for a brief excursus on a point of ancient ritual or to tell an apposite myth, in a genre that would not become popular again until the early 19th century. In the topographical part of his work, Pausanias is fond of digressions on the wonders of nature, the signs that herald the approach of an earthquake, the phenomena of the tides, the ice-bound seas of the north, and the noonday sun that at the summer solstice, casts no shadow at Syene Aswan. 
While he never doubts the existence of the deities and heroes, he sometimes criticizes the myths and legends relating to them. His descriptions of monuments of art are plain and unadorned. They bear the impression of reality, and their accuracy is confirmed by the extant remains. He is perfectly frank in his confessions of ignorance. When he quotes a book at second hand he takes pains to say so. The work left faint traces in the known Greek corpus. It was not read. Habicht relates. There is not a single mention of the author, not a single quotation from it, not a whisper before Stephanus Byzantius in the 6th century, and only two or three references to it throughout the Middle Ages. The only manuscripts of Pausanias are three 15th century copies, full of errors and lacunae, which all appear to depend on a single manuscript that survived to be copied. Niccolo Nicoli had this archetype in Florence in 1418. At his death in 1437, it went to the library of San Marco, Florence, then it disappeared after 1500, until 20th century archaeologists concluded that Pausanias was a reliable guide to the sites they were excavating. Pausanias was largely dismissed by 19th and early 20th century classicists of a purely literary bent, they tended to follow the usually authoritative Willemowitz in regarding him as little more than a purveyor of secondhand accounts, who, it was suggested, had not visited most of the places he described. Habicht 1985 describes an episode in which Willemowitz was led astray by his misreading of Pausanias in front of an August party of travelers in 1873, and attributes to it Willemowitz's lifelong antipathy and distrust of Pausanias. Modern archaeological research, however, has tended to vindicate Pausanias. Topic. See also Travel literature James George Fraser Topic Notes Topic References Description of Greece TR WHS Jones and HA Ormerid 1918 Description of Greece Jones translation at Theoe project Bibliography in French the Oldest Guide Book in the World. Charles Wibley in Macmillan's Magazine, Vol. LXXVII, November 1897 to April 1898, pp. 415 to 421. Andrew Stewart, 100 Greek Sculptors, Their Careers and Extant Works. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Pausanias, Traveller. Encyclopædia Britannica. 20 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. G. Hawes, Rationalizing Myth in Antiquity. Oxford, OUP, 2013 template, ISBN, 9780199672776 contains much discussion of Pausania's skeptical approaches to myth. Topic further reading Arafat, K.W. 1992. Pausania's Attitude to Antiquities, Annual of the British School at Athens 87-387-409. Akujarvi, J. 2005. Researcher, Traveller, Narrator, Studies in Pausania's Periagesis. Studia Graeca et Latina Londensia 12. Stockholm, Almquist and Wicksell. Alcock, S., J. Cherry, and J. Elsner, eds. 2001. Pausania's, Travel and Memory in Roman Greece. Oxford, Oxford Univ. Press. Arafat, K. 1996. Pausanias Greece, Ancient Artists and Roman Rulers. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press. Diller, A. 1957. The Manuscripts of Pausanias, Transactions of the American Philological Association 88-169-188. Habicht, C. 1984. Pausanias and the Evidence of Inscriptions, Classical Antiquity 340-56. Habicht, c. 1998. Pausanias' Guide to Ancient Greece, 2d ed. Sather Classical Lectures 50. Berkeley, Univ. of California Press. Hutton, W. E. 2005. Describing Greece, Landscape and Literature in the Periagesis of Pausanias. Greek Culture in the Roman World. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press. Pyron del Forge, v. 2008. Retour à la source, Pausanias et la religion grecque. Curnot's Supplement 20. Liège, Belgium, Centre International d'Etude de la religion grecque, Pretzler, Maria, 2005. 
Pausanias and Oral Tradition, Classical Quarterly 55.1, 235-249. Pretzler, M. 2007. Pausanias, Travel Writing in Ancient Greece. Classical Literature and Society. London, Duckworth. Pretzler, Maria, 2004, Turning Travel into Text, Pausanias at Work Greece and Rome 51.2, 199-216. Sanchez Hernandez, Juan Pablo, 2016. Pausanias and Rome's Eastern Trade, Nemozine 69.6, 955-977. External links Description of Greece at Perseus Digital Library, Jones Trans. 1918 New translation by Gregory Nagy of Harvard University's Center for Hellenic Studies incomplete. Works written by or about Pausanias at Wikisource quotations related to Pausanias geographer at Wikiquote Media related to Pausanias geographer at Wikimedia Commons Pausanias description of Greece, tr, with a commentary by J.G. Fraser 1898 Volume 1 also at the Internet Archive Pausanias at the Perseus Project, Greek, English Jones Trans. 1918